Will the regular wheelbase 3 series be available to us in India? I'll let you know at the end of this video. So do stick around. Here's the facelift on the 7th generation 3 series, the D20 3 series. It's called LCI in BMW speak, life cycle intervention. And as you can see, it's got new headlamps, a new bumper, it's got new tail lamps, but the big difference is on the inside. So we'll start life cycle intervention. Go ahead, you know the drill. Give us a shout out, like this video, share this video with like-minded enthusiasts, subscribe to the Evo India channel. This is BMW's new wide screen. It's a curved screen and this is what is the highlight of the 3 Series LCI. It's also got BMW's new operating system and normally we don't do this, but because this is new and this is something that you're going to see in all BMWs in the days to come, we're going to run you through all the menus on this new OS. Before we talk about the screen, let's talk about the center console. So as you will notice, the traditional gear lever is missing and in place comes this toggle switch. So you pull it back for drive, push it ahead for reverse, this button out here is for park. Your sport, comfort, eco pro button moments, all of that remains the same. And you also have the same iDrive controller, that knob, but the screen is touch. So let's play around with this. So this is the BMW curved display, as they call it. 14.9 inches for the infotainment. This is really wide and your Apple CarPlay and Google Android Auto display goes completely edge to edge. In fact, just look at the maps. I've never seen maps that are so huge and the clarity of the display is excellent. In fact, Apple CarPlay never looked so good. So obviously you have your maps, you have your music, you have all of that on CarPlay. I'll also run you through the various menus on the BMW system, on the OS. So these are the widgets and you can add widgets so you can actually change the widgets. You have the traffic, weather, it's sunny and a 1% chance of rain today. So that's a good thing. You can go into the vehicle settings, your tire pressure, engine oil level, all of that. I should also point out other cool things. You have all the vehicle apps. So you have the digital key now, which means you can actually activate the key on your phone and you don't need the physical key anymore. That's a nice touch. You have your WhatsApp also in CarPlay. Do you want to send a message or make a call? You can actually dictate a message on WhatsApp. So you never have to touch the phone while you're driving the car. Another nice touch and important, never look at your phone while you're driving. So again, you have Zoom, in CarPlay, all of that. Radar bot, that's what we use. Shh, don't tell anybody. Your music in CarPlay. I'll point this out. So in the system settings, in sound, you can adjust your bass, treble, this has got a Harman Kardon sound system which sounds really good and also you can adjust the level of the gong. So in the volume settings, this is the gong that goes on when you hit 80 and 120, bong, 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 bong. So you can reduce You can reduce the intensity of the gong and that's the way we like it. So a lot of really cool touches and I should point out you stick it into reverse and you have reversing assistant. So now this remembers the last 50 meters that you drove exactly the same way, including the steering. So you hit reversing assistant. I'm not touching the steering and it reverses out in the exact same direction that you actually drove it in. So my hands not touching it. I'm only feathering the brakes. I don't want it to go too fast. And it remembers the last 50 meters that you drove. And when you get to the end of it, it gives you a warning. It says end of route, take control of the vehicle. So that's a really cool touch. And also when you switch off the car, so switching off the car here, and you can either activate pre-cooling now or set the pre-cooling for the time that you're going to jump into the car. So say you're going to jump into the car at say six o'clock in the evening after work, the car will cool itself for you when you get in. 
As for the digital cluster, this is 12.3 inches and it has a new graphic system. So it's a very angular graphic system. Again, the Taco, it swings anti-clockwise, which I'm not really a fan of. I always like it to swing clockwise, but hey, this is what it is. You can't really get the maps on it like other systems allow you to, but you have this massive display, so you don't really need the maps out here. In the different modes, so in Sport, it glows red, in comfort, it is sort of a grey pattern and in Eco Pro, it's obviously got the blue. So the colours change and a little bit of the graphics change. And that's the digital cluster that you have out here right in front of you. So a lot of really cool features on this new BMW OS. Do you like it? Do you think they should have added something more? Let us know in the comments. I know you want us to get to the driving, but I must point out this is the long wheelbase. That means 110 mm has been added to the wheelbase and that increases the rear knee room by 43 mm. Now, the driver's seat is adjusted to my driving position and I still have, what is this, 3 inches of free knee room. So, it is spacious out here. There is space to tuck your toes under the seat. The headroom is also good enough. And the best part, it now gets these nice pillows for the headrest. So, you can rest your weary head after a long day at work while you're driven back home in a 3 series. A 3 series was never meant to be driven around in but in this long wheelbase you can drive around. Of course when you're sitting at the back always make sure you are belted up. It's amazing how just the addition of this BMW curved display transforms the cabin of the 3 Series because honestly, nothing else has changed. This gear lever is not there, so it opens up more space, so makes it a little bit more visually roomy and airy. But it's a screen and the screen just transforms everything. That makes the cabin look significantly more upmarket, more modern. And now it can stand shoulder to shoulder with the C-Class. Though the C-Class still as a baby S, feels a bit more expensive, has a bit more of that touchy-feely things that make you go wow, but this is very close. Between the C-Class and the 3 Series, purely on the interiors, I can't recommend one over the other. And that was not the case earlier. When the C-Class, first time we saw it, it just blew the earlier 3 Series to the weeds. Now, they stand shoulder to shoulder. Now the steering wheel, it's got the M badge and that I must point out, both the versions, the 320D and the 330i, there is no luxury line and all of that, both get the M Sport kit as standard. So you can only buy the 3 series with the M Sport kit. I guess everybody wants the M Sport kit, so that's why it's there. But isn't M supposed to be a little bit more exclusive? Now every 3 series is an M Sport 3 series, which is sort of diluting the value of that badge. Anyway, that's for the product marketeers and planners to decide. I'm here to talk about the driving and on the driving front, nothing really has changed because after all, why fix it if it ain't broke? The 3 Series was always really nice to drive and it continues in the same vein. Now what we're driving is the 330i and that is the 3 litre straight 6. It is not because the 330i is no longer the 3 litre straight 6. The 330i is still the 2 litre 4 cylinder engine with a turbocharger obviously. You get 254 bhp, 400 newton meters of torque and that 400 newton meters of torque, it peaks at just 1550 rpm. So you have all that low down grunt. So it's got almost a diesel kind of grunt and it has revs. It revs really happily. It does 0 to 100 in 6.2 seconds and the gearbox Nice, smooth gearbox. It's not a DCT, it's a regular automatic and 8-speed automatic and such a sweet, smooth gearbox. In sport mode, it gets a bit more enthusiastic. So overall, this package is superb. And you also get a 320D. But before I talk about the diesel, I should point out that when you compare it to its main rival, which is the C-Class, the C-Class petrol is only a 1.4-litre engine, not a 2-litre engine. So if you want an enthusiastic petrol engine in your car, rear-wheel drive, the 3 Series is the only one for you. You also have the A4, but the A4, remember, is front-wheel drive, even though the A4 does get a 2-litre engine, not a 1.4. The 1.4 is a bit too small. 
As for the 320D, again, 2 litre diesel engine, you get the same 400 Newton meters of torque, but just 187 bhp, so slightly lower in terms of power. And 0 to 100, it goes up to 7.6 seconds. And of course, all these engines, they meet the upcoming RDE BS6 norms, which kick in in April of 2023. So it's future proofed that this petrol engine revs so sweetly, so smoothly. It does have a nice note to it also. So if you want an enthusiastic petrol in this category with rear wheel drive, three series category, with rear wheel and with this nice curved display, with the space at the back, with the ride comfort, panoramic sunroof. It's got a panoramic sunroof. This is not just the default choice. This is the choice that you will absolutely love. God, this car is really nice. This is the long wheelbase, but behind the wheel, you will hardly, if ever, notice. It just goes around bends so nicely. There's a nice fluidity to its change of direction. Really nice grip. Solid bite from the front end. The 3 Series was always the dynamic benchmark and it continues to put such a big smile on your face. And the big difference is, compared to its rivals, say the C-Class, the C-Class is a bit firm. The 3 Series the damping is really, really nice, particularly the low amplitude damping. So over the small bumps, it soaks it up so well. The sharper bumps, that does catch it out. That's when the suspension runs out of travel. You feel a bit of a thud. But over moderately broken roads, over those roads that have ripples and all of that, ride is superb, really nice. This gets the same comfort suspension as the earlier 3 Series. Basically, the comfort suspension is the package that they put onto all the cars that come to third world countries, considering our roads. So you have those big gaps in the wheel arch, the raised ground clearance. So it doesn't touch over speed breakers, but the gap in the wheel arch is a bit ungainly. The car doesn't really sit really well on its wheels and it runs 18 inch wheels. Both the 320D and the 330i get 18 inch wheels unlike the 17s on the earlier car. And the thing is, in the earlier 3 Series, if you sat in the back in the regular wheelbase, that would be silly. Who would buy a 3 Series to sit in the back, a little bit cramped, that stiff ride quality, you're going dum 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 It's uncomfortable. It's ridiculous buying a 3 Series and giving it to your chauffeur and you sitting at the back. Now, with this grand limousine, as they call it, you really can sit in the back. It is comfortable. The backrest angle is nice. You have that soft cushion on the headrest. So you can be chauffeured in a 3 Series without purists like me thinking you're a bloody idiot. Of course, that extra ride height and the softness in the suspension does result in a little bit more body roll. The steering is much lighter. Remember the earlier 3 Series steerings that were heavy and everybody complained about it? Now it is light. So you stick it into sport mode or sport individual if you prefer. It does weigh up a bit, not as much as earlier, but this is nice. This doesn't really take much effort. You can guide the 3 Series beautifully through these corners, push it, get the tires to squeal a bit, let you know that you're approaching the limits of its cornering performance, and really enjoy the drive. This is not as sharp or engaging as earlier 3 Series. That, I have to tell you, those were more agile, more enthusiastic. If you threw those over these tight corners, you could steer it on the throttle. Here, can't do that. But as a compromise, I think it's a well-made compromise. Let's put it that way. The small speed breaker, you barely felt it. And so the final question, can you buy a regular wheelbase 3 Series in India? Well, yes, if you want the M340i, and I highly recommend that car. It is really, really, really good to drive. But if you're looking at a regular 330i or 320d, you can only get it in the long wheelbase version. And as purists, both you and me will cry foul. But 
truth of the matter is that when the regular wheelbase and the long wheelbase were both being sold side by side, it was the long wheelbase that was selling miles, miles more than the regular wheelbase. And that's why BMW India, they've rationalized the lineup. Also, another truth bomb, the BMW 3 Series, even with the long wheelbase, is still very good to drive. It still sets the dynamic benchmark and you have more space at the back, you get good ride comfort. So this is the car that you can both drive and be driven in. And when it does the best of all worlds, all those requirements it meets, who are we to complain? The BMW 3 Series still remains a great car. Wait a bit, what am I saying? The BMW 3 Series still remains an excellent car. <laughs>